people might be completely unaware of what the falter day is. So if you could also give just an overall um, definition, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, so let's let's go ahead and we'll, we'll use that uh, 2020, because again, this is where I just have to thank my lucky stars that um, I have the, the follow through day concept ingrained in my head and not using my, um, not using my emotions and my, my gut. And um, so here we have the, the COVID crash. And so first of all, you start with a downtrend um, and then you need to know, okay, what tells me that I've got a signal to potentially get back in. So what you look for is you look for a day up. And here's that day that I was talking about where, um, you know, we had a, a strong day up here. Uh, the the S and P five hundred was up nine point two nine percent on the thirteenth of March. One day is not enough, okay? Because the very next day, you know, there we are, down, uh, down a yeah twelve percent. So um, one day is not enough. I, I I I like to think of it as you need a confirmation of the strength. Um, if you're if you remember back to geometry days, right? How do you how do you have a line? Well, you need two points, right? You can't just have one point for a line. You need two points, one, and then an uptrend tells you that you've got another point that is hopefully higher, and that's that tells you that your your trend has potentially changed. So you look for a rally day. So that's a rally day, but then we immediately fail. So you stop counting. But you're just going to start counting day one of the rally. So here's day one, day two, day three, and then you look for a day of power. You know, once you get to day four or later, you're looking for a day of power that confirms the strength of your rally. It has to be up, you know, generally we're looking at a 1% or more, depending on how volatile your market is. It's gotta look, it's gotta look powerful, right? Um, in some markets, 1% is like, well, that's just the average, you know, the average move. That's why in 99 and 2000, they'll, up the criteria. He said, you know what? In this market, we need like 1.7 or maybe even 2.1 for a follow through day to mean anything because the average day is up, you know, or down uh, well over a percent. So it has to look like a day of power. And so as you keep on counting, so here we are on the SP 500, day one, two, three, four, five. Now this day um, was, was strong, it was up 3%. But here's another component that we need. We want the volume to be heavier than the day before. It doesn't have to be above average, but it has to be heavier than the day before. So we didn't get it there. We had the price, but not the volume. So we keep on counting, okay? So wh where was I at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's another day that's up enough, but um, oh, the volume is there. That's your follow through day. April 2nd on the S&P 500. You know, so even though this was, you know, had come down, you were still getting uh, some power there. And now on the NASDAQ, you know, it's, it's often nice when you have multiple indexes follow through together, but a lot of times one will be a little bit uh, quicker than the other. And so here we are on the NASDAQ. Here's that April 2nd day. Um, the volume was a little bit lower, so it didn't qualify as a follow through day, but you just go a couple more days out the third and then you know here here we are at the sixth and that was your follow through day on the nasdaq so again if we just kind of look at some of the stocks that were you know setting up at that time like we did you know you've got your nvidia's and your um you know your microsoft's and and so on that that looked like they were you know potential oh, I, I i switched this to 2022 unfortunately um okay so yeah, if you look at you know your your Nvidia's and your Microsofts, those were those were setting up, those had relative strength lines at new highs, um, and even though this was a very steep correction, you know usually we're avoiding corrections that are forty percent in a in a stock, but given what happened in the index, uh, sometimes you have to make allowances. Um, one of the one of the situations that was uh, early on in working for Bill. Um, I watched what he did with uh, Charles Schwab and, you know, here's Charles Schwab. This is, it's very compressed because this is an arithmetic chart and Charles Schwab went up so much. It was up over 400% in six months, ended with this climax run. But if we go back to October 
1998. Um, so this was right after you had the long-term cap, uh, long-term capital management. Um, they, you know, they blew up, right? The Fed had to bail them out. Um, so you had that going on in September. Um, and I'm just going to start with the S&P 500. So you had this S&P 500 come down here. You had a follow-through day in here. And by the way, this was a lesson for me. I played this follow-through day. It didn't work. It rolled over. And then when this follow-through day happened right here, I didn't play it because I said, oh, you fooled me that time. I'm not going to fall for that again. I didn't play that one. But look at what Charles Schwab looked like on that day. Um, right there, breaking out of this cup with handle. And I was asking Bill, like, gosh, that handle seems overly steep. This base seems overly dramatic. You know, it's a 40% depth. The handle is 27%. It almost looks like a double bottom that just didn't undercut that second leg. And he said, well, go back to the market. Look at what the market did. You have to put it in the context of what the market did. And what he thought was strong about Charles Schwab was when the S&P 500 undercut here, Charles Schwab didn't. And so here we are, we're back to that same concept of what we saw in 2009. The stocks that didn't undercut were the stronger ones. They had the stronger relative strength lines. And that's, that's, that's where you're gonna find your leaders. Yeah, perfect. And going back to the fall through day concept, what's kind of some probabilities with the fall through day? And, and also, uh, when would a fall through day fail, as you just mentioned, back back in the 90s? Uh, what does it have to undercut to, to qualify as a failure where you need a, a whole nother rally to, to potentially restart an uptrend? Well, you know, ultimately, when when Bill would say, look, this this rally is is a failure um, is, is when it undercuts the low of your rally day. You know, that's that's it. But that doesn't mean that you're not getting out before that. Right. And and here again, I have to stress that I don't you know, I, I learned early on not to plunge because I did that. You know, I did that early in my career and got my head handed to me. Um, you know, a follow through day doesn't mean you go in 100 percent or on margin. It means you start to, to test out the waters. Um, so when when that rally day is undercut, that's a that's the the, the the rally is done. You can have some cases where the follow through day is undercut and they still work. Those are rare. Most of the time, uh, you're gonna you're gonna undercut your rally day low, and it's it, it's it's gonna be difficult to make money. Um, but then beyond that, in terms of success rates, um, this is where it gets a little tricky, because you know. A lot of times when you're doing a study, um, you have to be very careful to define your terms. So I would ask, what does it mean to be successful? You know, is it, and then the way Bill would define it is he would say, well, could I make money? Was it, was it long enough and going up enough that I could make money in this market? Um, and, you know, sometimes that can be very short, you know, but if the, if the signals are clear and you don't get the rug pulled out from under you, you can still make a little bit of money. And so he would consider that, hey, you know, I made money. It's, it's, that was a successful rally. Um, so we, we actually just did a very detailed analysis of this. Um, we had Eric Kroll on and uh, Eric Kroll is one of the co-authors of the life cycle trade. Um, he's done a lot of studies himself. Um, and uh, you know, on the podcast, he went through his data, which which pretty much matches a lot of what I've seen myself uh, in terms of the the signals that you know kind of tell you when a rally is going to fail. You know, especially that follow through day undercut, seeing distribution, a lot of distribution, but a lot of times it's going to come down to your individual stocks. That's not necessarily going to show up in the indexes immediately, but you're going to see it in your portfolio. Your, your choices, your decisions, they're not working. The market's giving you feedback saying, hey, there's something wrong here. Either you're off, you're in the wrong stuff, or this market just isn't, it isn't working. And so as long as you're paying attention to those signals and that market feedback, you can usually get out without getting too damaged. And that's what it's all about, is making sure you're not taking big hits. 